Can you guess what kind of egg this is? If you guessed ostrich, you're right. It's the largest single egg that is laid by an animal on Earth, and it is from the largest bird that exists on planet Earth. It is an ostrich egg. Ostrich eggs are very large, and also the, the shell is really thick. It's like millimeter or two thick. Um, and you can see this hole uh, is where somebody has opened the egg and then emptied the contents from the inside. All of the yolk and the albumin has been taken out. That way it doesn't rot on the inside. And it, it also is the same volume as 22 uh, regular chicken eggs. Uh, you may also notice that this egg has a really, really shiny texture. It actually feels like ceramic. Um, did you may notice that there are uh, little little pock marks in it too, um, which is gives part, gives partly its texture, but mostly it's just really um, shiny and slippery. These eggs are from the smallest type of bird, a hummingbird, and these hummingbird eggs are from an Anna's hummingbird. Anna's hummingbirds are native to the Bay Area and they do migrate, but the Anna, Anna's hummingbirds here in the Bay Area uh, do winter in the Bay Area as it, it doesn't get too cold here. Um, and there are usually two eggs in a clutch. Um, and if you ever see a hummingbird nest, they're illegal to take down uh, because the hummingbirds will often reuse their nests um, multiple times within the same season. Um, and as you can see, these eggs are not really much bigger than the size of a jelly bean. Um, and the shells are really thin um, and really fragile, which is why these are crushed a little bit. Did you think that this was an avocado? It's not. It's an egg. It's an egg from a real bird called an emu. Emus are very large birds like ostriches. Um, that live in a completely different place. Um, emus are from Australia, whereas ostriches can be found in Africa. Um, and their eggs, this one, they have a range of colors. This one is, you know, almost, almost a dark teal, um, but they can range from a, a quite bright teal colored um, to very dark uh, Haas avocado color with a very similar texture on it. This one um, is shiny, but definitely has a much uh, like grainier texture than the ostrich egg. These eggs are from birds that you can see here at Curiodicy. This one is from our golden eagles. This one is from a black crowned night heron. And this one is from a band tailed pigeon. Uh, and of all of these, our golden eagles are actually the ones that laid this egg. Um, our golden eagles will often uh, nest uh, and do nesting behaviors and they'll lay eggs. Um, and this egg was collected because um, we don't actually have a permit in order to be able to breed um, our golden eagles. So and we do collect the eggs and we keep them to use for educational purposes. We've chosen these eggs because these are from birds that you will have likely seen here in the Bay Area. These are really common birds. Uh, this one is from a Canada goose and the, the Canada geese are really large. You probably have seen them flying in a V formation and you've probably also seen them sitting on the grass, eating grass and at a, at a golf course or a schoolyard or a park somewhere. And they, they make a nest that is a, a bowl-shaped depression in the ground, um, and they can lay up to five or six eggs in a clutch. This one is from a turkey vulture. You guys have also really likely seen turkey vultures in the area. Um, they won't fly in a V formation, but you will see them circling in the air in a and that they do that because they are they're riding a hot air a warm air current in a column rising up off of the ground and they are using that rising air column um, to gain altitude without having to expend energy by flapping um, and these guys don't actually make a nest 
uh, as often, um, they just lay their egg on a, on a raised surface somewhere off the ground. Um, and you may notice that this egg, as opposed to this one, has much more uh, pigment, much more, you know, splattered color pigments here. Um, and those are actually pigments that are made in the, the formation of the egg. Uh, and they're laid down in layers, too. This one is from a raven. I'm sure you guys have seen ravens around here too. It's another really common bird. Um, they're large black birds as opposed to a turkey vulture which has a red head and no feathers on its head. A raven has black feathers covering its whole head and a very large black beak. Um, and they are really smart birds. They're in the corvid family and corvids like ravens and crows and jays are all really, really smart birds. And uh, they, they also, they do make a nest um, and the pigments that you see here um, were from, uh, formed in two different ways. The blue, the blue uh, green color is one type of pigment and this kind of brownish color is another type of pigment. Right, okay, so these are uh, some much smaller eggs from birds that you're not as likely to see in this area. In fact, these are gonna be probably really rare to see uh, because they're all owls and most owls are nocturnal. So they're awake when we're asleep and vice versa. This one is from a Western screech owl. Um, Western screech owls are very, they're pretty small and um, they uh, do make a screeching sound um, and their, their eggs, you can see, are quite round, not as ovoid as um, chicken eggs that were other eggs that you're used to seeing. This one is from a barn owl. Barn owls you may have seen are bigger than western screech owls. They have a lot of white in their feathers and they also have a very strong facial disc in their faces and that helps actually that shape helps funnel sound into the ears on the sides of their heads. And as you can see on this egg, um, the, the coloration on this egg actually makes it look like there is lichen growing on the surface of this egg, kind of like a, a rock mite. And then this egg, this much smaller one, is from a burrowing owl. Burrowing owls, you may or may not have heard, are endangered in the Bay Area. Most of the range that they, will, they would have used as nesting and hunting territory um, was in the San Francisco Bay Estuary marshes and 90% of the original marshes in the Bay Area have been repurposed for other things, um, you know, buildings or uh, salt manufacturing. Um, so there's only 10% of the remaining marsh habitat in the San Francisco Bay Estuary um, that these guys can use as nesting and living territory. Um, they also they dig their own burrows occasionally. They will use abandoned burrows um, that were dug by ground squirrels, but they will dig their own burrows. They lay their eggs in their burrows. Um, and of all of the owls, they are actually diurnal, which means that they are awake during the day. These three eggs are from raptors that you might see here in the Bay Area. Uh, raptors are also known as birds of prey, and they uh, hunt, kill, and eat other animals. This one is from a Swainson's hawk. Swainson's hawks are raptors that you can see in the Bay Area, though they're not going to be visible um, as frequently as others. Um, and they are uh, also the, have the longest migratory route of all North American raptors. They fly from around here and even north of here all the way down to Argentina and back every year. Um, and that's a 13,000 mile round trip. Um, and the reason they go down there is because in the Northern Hemisphere in our, in our winter, it's, uh, it's summer in the Southern Hemisphere in Argentina. And during Argentinian summers, they have uh, big swarms of locusts that are like really large grasshoppers um, that are an abundant food source for Swainson's hawks. 
Um, and the, there is an issue with that though. Um, in, in order to protect crops from being mowed down by swarms of locusts, um, farmers will spray a pesticide called DDT on the crops, which is a pesticide, so it'll kill insects. Uh, but if the Swainson's hawks eat those locusts before they die, um, the DDT goes inside their body. Now, the, it, the pesticide doesn't hurt a, uh, a higher animal like a bird, um, but what it does do is have unintentional consequences on the formation of an eggshell. So um, if a female bird eats the DDT, and then produces an egg in her body, um, the eggshell ends up being very weak because DDT prohibits the transfer of calcium from the mother bird bones into the formation of the eggshell. Um, so the eggs end up very weak and brittle and will break when they are sat on for incubation. Um, and this is actually a stray not just uh, that impacts Swainson's hawks, but other birds as well, like um, brown pelicans and uh, and bald eagles uh, and peregrine falcons. Um, luckily though, uh, uh, the United States uh, made DDT illegal to use in the United States um, so that birds here aren't impacted, but migratory birds like Swainson's hawks um, do still um, have their, their populations impacted by DDT use um, in other places in the world. Uh, this one is from a hawk that you probably have seen in the Bay Area. This is a more commonly seen uh, raptor. This is from a red tail hawk. Red tail hawks are probably <clears throat> the raptors that you've seen flying around, uh, possibly in pairs um, and uh, hunting together, and they have a, an orangish uh, tail as adults. And this egg is a really neat egg. It's from the um, United States national icon, um, the bald eagle. And as you can see, this one um, has been uh, repaired because it has been broken. Um, so I had to glue all these little pieces back together. You may have noticed on some of these eggs that I've been showing you that there are some numbers and letters. These are catalog numbers that we use in order to keep track of which birds these are and when they were collected. This one is from a great blue heron. You've probably seen one in this area. They're really big, they're uh, quite tall, um, and they have predominantly uh, a whitish to grayish to oh, maybe kind of bluish uh, coloration in their feathers. Um, they are really neat because they are hunters and um, they, not like you may have known, um, but they actually eat more um, rodents than, than fish, um, although you may have seen them fishing in a marsh. And in fact, these are all eggs from birds that you may have seen in a marsh. Um, I wanted to uh, honor them because we at uh, Curiosity are on the bay um, and right next to a marsh and uh, we love the marsh and really encourage you to go visit when you can. Um, this one is from a western grebe. Grebes are really neat birds that um, also fish uh, but they unlike a can. They don't dive down into the water from a, a flying start and hit the water really hard. They just sit on top of the surface of the water and duck down underneath to go fishing under the water. Um, and this one, another marsh bird, is from a American bittern. Um, these are maybe less likely to see in this area. And then these two are from really interesting birds. This one is from a killdeer. These also you can find in a marsh. And this is the, gonna be a small bird that you may have seen not on the water, uh, but on the land, um, pretending that it has a broken wing. These birds, in order to lure a predator away from their nest, which they make right on the ground, right in the little pebbles on the ground in a marsh, um, they will uh, lure anything that comes close to their nest away by pretending, feigning that it has a, a broken wing. And this one is from a really special bird that you probably haven't seen around here in the marshes in San Francisco Bay Estuary. 
This one is from a Ridgeway rail. The Ridgeway rail is not only endemic to the Bay Area, which means that it can only be found here, nowhere else in the world, but it is also endangered, um, mainly due to habitat loss. So there, um, of all of the Bay, all, all of the uh, marshes in the Bay Area, um, only 10% of the original marshes remain. Um, and uh, of that 10%, these Ridgeway rails don't, uh, they can only occupy some of those habitats. Um, so, and not only, not only that, but they're also really reclusive, which means that they uh, don't, they're rarely seen. Um, but if you do want to hear them, um, you can try going to Bixby Park in Palo Alto. You may notice that this is a more unusually shaped bird egg. Um, this more teardrop shaped bird egg is shaped like this for a reason. Um, this is a thick billed myrrh egg. Myrrhs, they look like penguins, but they're not, they fly. And myrrhs will lay their eggs right on a cliff edge. Um, and then they fly off of the cliff into the water to go hunting for fish. Um, and they don't make a nest. So their eggs are laid directly on these rocky cliffs. Um, and sometimes there won't be um, a buffer to prevent the egg from rolling away. But that is precisely why this egg is, is, is shaped like this. Um, it's adapted to be shaped so that if the egg is accidentally kicked, it doesn't roll off the cliff. Instead, it just rolls in a circle. Um, and that, that uh, motion is even tighter when the egg is actually weighted um, at this end with, with more mass. Um, as you can see, it's empty now. And, um, and that is what makes this egg so special.